Today I'm going to teach you how I made this beautiful vanity for a customer's bathroom. I'm really excited because I'm using a fast setting epoxy. This allowed me to get the job done really quickly. So stay tuned to the end and let me know what you think. All right, this little vanity is built out of three quarter inch MDF. We did put an inch and a half reveal and a rock edge. Then after we painted it with the black undercoat, I fogged the edges with two colors. I came in with the hammered copper and then I came back with the black. So I'm super excited about this small vanity because I get to use the amazing Quick Coat, which is a quick cure epoxy. I'll be able to pour my color coat and go over with my flood coat in as soon as four hours. So I'm super stoked about this. The thing is, is if you've never worked with the amazing quick coat, you have to be very quick. You've only got about a 20 minute open time. So you have to have everything ready to go. So I've got them in my cups and here we go. First, I've got the Alumalite black opaque dye. We're just going to kind of pour it out random areas. Now on my amazing quick coat, I use about four ounces per square foot, which is a little bit more than I would use if I were doing the same finish with the regular epoxy, which you can absolutely do. You don't, you don't have to use the amazing quick coat. I'm just super excited to be able to do that because this is a small piece and I know that I can get it to my customer a lot quicker. All right, this is the brown opaque dye. Now you really can't tell a lot when these two colors are side by side. When you'll be able to tell is when I meld the way that the next color, the aquamarine by Just Resin, the way it reacts over the black is gonna be a little bit different than the way it reacts over brown. So now we're gonna come in with our clear. We're gonna kind of fill in and the reason we do clear it's just a buffer and it adds some depth to our piece. Gives it almost a 3D look. Now here's the key. This is what makes this finish really awesome is our magic trial. It's large. I can get really large sweep and cover quite a bit of the surface. Now all I'm doing is slightly melding. I don't want to over meld or all I'm doing is making all these colors be one. So I'm making sure that I'm just hitting it slightly because I want to be able to kind of see down through my substrate. All right, good. Now I'm going to come back with my colors. Now the homeowner did not want a ton of color with this aquamarine. Coming in with my copper, my color passion copper. And I'm gonna make sure I get some along those edges and I'll work with those. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna just slightly meld. Just kind of using this tool and she wanted blocks of color. She didn't want it all melded. All right, I love that. I'm gonna let this kind of sit up. I'll grab my edges in front. Now I can already tell that it's starting to thicken. Now because this is a small piece, I'm able to tilt and that's what I want to do. I'm going to add a little heat. And then I'm going to tilt so that I can get some of that material over the front edge. All right, now I'm just going to come in and start working my edges. I can even come and grab some color that's left in my cup. Drizzle that. Now, depending on what color you really want to show through on those front edges is going to determine what you fog it with. If you want your edges to be really dark and black, then you're not going to fog with as much copper as I did. I can also take my hand and push up underneath that edge. That's really important to get that epoxy up underneath that edge. Now I think I'm going to even come in with a little bit on my finger with some color. Get a little color on those edges like that. I really like that. Now guys, this product's already getting really hot in my cup. So make sure 
like I said, if you're gonna use the Amazing Quick Coat, that you have everything ready to go before you start mixing. Now, I love that on there. And because it's starting to set up, it's not gonna roll off as fast. All right, so we have a little drop here, so that's what you wanna really make sure that you check. If you have any, something that doesn't look really natural, you can just kinda tap that out. Okay, I think I kind of like that right there. If you have any kind of surface tension, which happens a little more often with your quick cure epoxy, the only thing you have to do is tap it. And if something happens and you miss a spot, don't fret because when you come back over with your clear flood coat, then you will um, be able to fill in any of those divots that you miss. Guys, this is absolutely gorgeous. So guys, I am in awe with this finish. This is why I like mixing products that are different brands. So here we have the Illumilites, we have the Color Passions, and we have the Just Resin. So all of these products, when they swipe over each other, cause these reactions. This is organic. I haven't put any alcohol on here. This is just after about 15 minutes. And this is what happens when all of these products start to fight each other. You get an unbelievable finish. So that's why it's so important when you create that you have to give the epoxy and the products time to work with each other. If I were to automatically start uh, adding alcohol and doing all that, I would have missed out on all of these amazing effects. So since this is the amazing quick coat, I'll be able to flood the, flood the piece in about four hours. Now, I don't want to flood with the amazing quick coat because the amazing quick coat is curing so incredibly fast that it doesn't lay out as smooth as our regular cure epoxy. So what I'll do is in about four to six hours, I'll come back and I will flood this with the Stone Coat Countertop Art Coat. Now it is a dark finish. I could just as easily go over it with the regular epoxy. I like the Art Coat. I love my colors to stay super vivid and super, and super bright. Guys, this is one of the most gorgeous finishes I think I've ever done. I am absolutely in love with it. And I know the homeowner is going to be putting a small translucent pedestal sink uh, that is going to bring in all of these colors. So it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I can't wait to see it all installed. So let me know, what do you think? All right, it's been 24 hours and I'm getting ready to do the clear flood coat. Now, because this is the amazing quick coat, I could have flooded this as quickly as four hours, but I had other things going on and I'm flooding it on the next day. If you use the regular epoxy, you would definitely want to wait 24 hours before you do this step. All right, so we're nice and clean. We're gonna come in, we're gonna scuff sand and create a nice tooth so that our clear flood coat has good adhesions. Now, remember we talked about earlier how the amazing quick coat, because it cures so quickly that it is not gonna cure really smooth. And you can see this as I'm sanding that I've got highs and lows here. And it's not super, super level. I even have some divots where I had some surface tension. That's okay. All of that is gonna be taken care of by our clear flood coat because we're using the regular uh, uh, tabletop uh, art coat. All right, so on my edges, because this is really thin, I wanna be super careful. I'm not gonna use sandpaper. I'm gonna come and just use our little scrub pad, the 3M little scrub pads. All you're doing is creating a tooth so that we can get a mechanical bond between 
our two layers of epoxy. All right, once we've done that, we're gonna clean with isopropyl alcohol. Get rid of that dust. Make sure you get it out of all the little crevices and you're ready to go. Once you've sanded and you've cleaned with isopropyl alcohol, don't touch it with your bare hands. You may have oil on your hand and if you go to start touching that surface, you could get some surface tension or actually a resist where your, uh, your uh, flood coat doesn't want to cover really well. So be very mindful of that. Okay, we're coming in with our art coat, three ounces per square foot. Love this product, lots of open time. Unlike our amazing quick coat, which were very short open time, we've got a good 45 minutes to an hour of working time with this product. All right, pour it out. Now, since this is a small area, I'm not gonna use a trowel. I'm just gonna use my hand, and I'm just gonna use my hand and cup it, move the product to the edge. I'm not pushing it over the edge quite yet. If you're in a cooler environment, you can Torch your epoxy a little bit before you start to move it and it'll move a little easier for you. I also like to use my hand instead of a chop brush because I know for a fact that I won't get a bristle if I use my hand. Now this is where all that surface tension was and all those divots and you can see that epoxy is going right over the top. You're, it's going to fill it in. You'll never even know it was there. Now I'm going to walk around to the front. Now as I address my edges, I'm just going to kind of pull that epoxy over and around and push it up under the edge. Make sure it's all in the highs and lows. Now if you have a clean piece of plastic and there's nothing else on there, no contaminants, you can actually pick that product up off the plastic and reapply it to your edges. It's very important that you take your hand and you rub it underneath those edges so that you get a really good seal. Once I've got it spread out, everything's covered, I'll come back and I'll torch three times, waiting about mm, two to three minutes in between each torching. I don't torch my edges because when you torch the epoxy it becomes very fluid. If I torch my edges too much the product becomes very fluid and it's going to run off and make my edges really thin. So unless I really see some issues with bubbles I normally don't hit my edges with the torch. All right we'll let this set up a couple of minutes we'll come back we'll torch again we'll make sure that all of the airflow is turned off we don't want any air flowing across the surface that's gonna cause some ripples. We also don't wanna come back late in our pour, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and retorch. If we do that, we could cause waves. Alrighty, guys, what you think? Is this not gorgeous? I love how a flood coat really makes the piece have depth. It adds another layer of protection and it just brings out the true beauty of all the colors. If you'd like a very detailed video on how to get the perfect flood coat, I'll link that video in the description of this video below. Guys, I hope you liked this video. I think it turned out amazing. It's going to look fantastic in its forever home. I can't wait for the customer to see it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We're growing by leaps and bounds. All of these products that we used are available on our website, rk3designs.com. And remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.